Who could deliver a more entertaining call for offering? Let's hear it for Cindy. So we have a brief song, and then what I promise is a really short Christmas story. Then we're going to sing another carol, and then we're going to be heading out with our song benediction. So we're nearing the, the finish line here. But first, what I think is the most Unitarian Universalist Christmas song that's ever been written, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. As Unitarian Universalists, we believe that within each person is a light. Some of us call it the light of love. Some of us call it the light of God. But there is a light. And we say that each person has inherent worth and dignity. Can you say that each person has inherent worth and dignity? That's a profound religious and spiritual statement. And I think if more places would proclaim that, this would be a gentler, kinder world. So think about Rudolph. Here's this wonderful being that has this incredible light. And yet, everybody around them says, eh, tamp it down. We don't want to hear about this specialness, this light, this love that you have. And yet, Rudolph has this inner light that wants to not just be inner, but be made outer through kindness, through acts of generosity. And so I kind of think of Rudolph and that red nose. The red nose is Rudolph's chalice. You know, that's just what it is. Just taking the chalice in another form. And then one night, there is a need. And all the people who used to kind of put down, bully, belittle Rudolph say, wow, you have something. We need your light. Show us the way. That's what Unitarian Universalism says, uh, Unitarian Universalism says to us, to each one of us. You have a light. You have a light. We need you. We need you to help show us the way. And together, collectively, we need our light to show each other the way and maybe in some small way show the world beyond us there is another way. At least we're trying. So in the spirit of Unitarian Universalism and your light. Let's rise and body your spirit and let us sing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the most Unitarian Universalist Christmas song of them all.
Please, please be seated. So I promised that it would be a kid-family-friendly service, so I'm trying to deliver. So a very short story. I promise you it isn't more than four to five minutes. It is called Wally's Christmas Pageant by Dina Donahue Adapted. Now first, can somebody tell me what a Christmas pageant is? Just in case anybody doesn't know. Somebody want to kind of just shout it out? What's a Christmas pageant? Cheyenne, I know you know what it is. It's a bunch of us singing in front of the church. Okay, it's a bunch of us singing in front of the church, but we enact the nativity story. So everybody takes a different part in the nativity story, and it's almost like a little play. We bring it alive. Don't worry, you're not going to have to do that. <laughs> but this is a story about Wally's Christmas pageant. For years now, whenever Christmas pageants are talked about in a certain little town in the Midwest, someone is sure to mention the name of Wallace Perling. Wally's performance in one annual production of the Nativity Play has slipped into the realm of legend. But the old timers who were in the audience that Christmas night never tire of recalling exactly what happened. Wally was nine that year and in the second grade, although he should have been in the fourth. Most people in town knew Wally. Wally had difficulty keeping up. He was big and clumsy, slow in movement, slow in mind. Still, Wally was well-liked by the other children in his class, all of whom were smaller than he, though some had trouble hiding their irritation when Wally would ask to play ball with them, or any game for that matter, in which winning was important. Most often, they'd find a way to keep him out of the game kind of like Rudolph, but Wally would hang around anyway, not sulking, just hoping. He was always a helpful kid, a willing and a smiling one, and a natural protector of the underdog. Sometimes if the older kids chased the younger ones away, it always would be Wally who'd say, can't they stay? They're no bother. Wally really, really wanted to be a shepherd with a flute in the Christmas pageant that year. But the play's director, Miss Lambard, assigned him to what she said was a more important role. After all, she reasoned, the innkeeper did not have too many lines, and Wally's size would make his refusal of lodging to Mary and Joseph more forceful. And so it happened. That usual large family-filled audience gathered for the town's yearly extravaganza of shepherds and sheep, mangers, beards, crowns, halos, and a whole stage of squeaky voices. No one on or off stage was more caught up in the magic of the night than Wallace Perling. They said later that he stood in the wings and watched the performance with such fascination that from time to time Mrs. Lombard had to make sure he did not wander on stage before his cue. Then came the time when Joseph appeared tenderly, slowly, guiding Mary to the door of the inn. Joseph knocked hard on the wooden door set into the painted backdrop. <laughs> Wally, the innkeeper, was there, waiting. What do you want? Wally said, swinging the door open with a brusque gesture. Joseph replied, we seek lodging. Seek it elsewhere, 
Wally looked straight ahead, but spoke vigorously. The inn is filled. Sir, we have asked everywhere in vain. We have traveled far and are very weary. There's no room in the inn for you. Wally looked properly stern. Please, good innkeeper, this is my wife, Mary. She is heavy with child and needs a place to rest. Surely you have some small corner for her. She is so tired. Now, for the first time, Wally the innkeeper relaxed his stiff stance and looked down at Mary and saw her, really saw her. And with that, there was this long pause. Long enough to make the audience a bit tense with embarrassment. No, be gone, the prompter whispered from the wings. No, Wally replied, be gone. Joseph sadly placed his arm around Mary, and Mary laid her head upon Joseph's husband's shoulder, her husband's shoulder, and the two of them just started to move away. But the innkeeper, Wally, did not return inside the inn, however. Wally just stood there in the doorway, watching that forlorn couple. His mouth was open, his brow creased with concern, his eyes filling unmistakably with tears. Don't go, Joseph, Wally called out. Bring Mary back. And Wallace Perling's face grew into a bright smile. You can have my room. <laughs> Some people in town thought that the pageant had been ruined. Yet there were others, many, many others, who considered it the most Christmas of all Christmas pageants that had ever been. The end. Let's rise and body your spirit and let us sing joy to the world. Joy to the world, the love has come. Let earth with praises ring. Let every heart prepare a room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, now gladness. Rains. Let hearts their just songs employ. While field and flood, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sound. 